Hello Summoners, welcome to Main Deck Masters. My name is Jacob and today I've got another deck profile video for you. This time it is a green deck and it is Divine Tokiwa. In this build I'm utilizing a combination of the Leaf Kindreds and the Prey Birds to make a cohesive deck. And on the Prey Bird side, not only am I utilizing the Ascend package, but I am using the Gale package as well with Feng Wong and Toki 5 in order to create another way to end the game other than slamming a Divine Tokiwa onto the field. You can still kill your opponent with Feng Wong if Divine Tokiwa just doesn't work out for you or if you're not able to see it. So the deck ramps a lot and it has a lot of really cool combo potential that I will show off in this deck profile. So let's get into it, but before we do, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps out more than you think. Let's get started. So we're gonna start off with Nexuses and in this build, I am running four Sacred Totem Poles. Sacred Totem Poles is actually a really, really good Nexus. It helps stifle opponent early aggression because when they deal damage to you with a three cost or less spirit, then you're able to exhaust another one of their spirits. They choose, but you exhaust another one of their spirits. So if you have like two Sacred Totem Poles out on the field and they hit you with a three cost or less, well, you're exhausting two of their spirits and it just completely stifles out the aggression. As well as its level two ability that if your Ascend Spirit basically kills your opponent's spirit in battle resolution, then you're going to burn your opponent for damage. So per Sacred Totem Pole, if I have one, two on the field with two cores on it, if my Divine Tokiwa swings, they're going to take two damage if they choose not to block it. And if they do block it and it's with something that's going to be smaller than Divine Tokiwa, they're going to get burned for two damage. And as turn player, if they're at two life, you have priority of having both of, both of these proc before they're able to proc like their their ice shield to heal themselves. So you say, okay, both of these proc before you're allowed to proc your burst and you kill your opponent. So it's a really good card early game and late game. And I'm really happy with how it is working. And on top of that, our ne next Nexus of course is for Hurricane Highlands. Anybody who's played Gale knows exactly what Hurricane Highlands does. If you don't know what it does during your main step, when you summon a spirit with Gale, you basically ramp cores onto that spirit equal to its gale number. So if you summon a spirit with gale two, you ramp two cores onto that gale spirit per Hurricane Highlands. And then it's level two ability during your opponent's attack step. If you kill something with one of your spirits with gale while blocking, you're going to exhaust another one of their spirits. So they choose, but you exhaust another one of their spirits. So if you have a Feng Wong on field and you don't swing with it or you know, you deal damage to them and restand it and they proc an ice shield. You have that Feng Wong on board to block and with Hurricane Highlands, you can block one of their spirits and start exhausting out their board once again. Just a really good card to help, you know, ramp up your board. Your opponent now has the choice. Do they kill the Sacred Totem Poles or do they kill the Hurricane Highlands? Either way, you're they're leaving something on the board that is going to be very powerful and can really seal out the game. So this is my Nexus lineup. Uh, you can drop, uh, you know, one in one if you want some some uh, other Nexus, like Forest of the Sacred Conifer, Conifer, if you're going with a more swift-oriented Prey Birds list. And of course, Hurricane Highlands is only there because I am running the Gale Package. If you're not running the Gale Package, you wouldn't be running Highlands. So, but I am, so this is my Nexus setup. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get onto Spirits. We are going to start with the Leaf Kindred side of the deck. And to start with, we are running four copies of Bark Maiden Lucerium. This card is really good. It works really well with Sacred Totem Poles because Sacred Totem Poles is a three cost Nexus and it works well with our other Leaf Kindred spirits. So its ability when it attacks, you can ramp a core either onto one of your other Leaf Kindred spirits or onto one of your Nexuses that cost three or fewer. And then it's level two ability when it is destroyed by any means, as long as it's still level two. So not by core removal, but just by straight up destruction. Then you can call, you can summon a spirit that costs five or less from your hand for free. And that is not called color locked, by the way. So you can summon anything that costs five or less for free when this is destroyed and you're able to ramp. If you get two of these Lucerium out on the field, you can start ramping really fast and then 
If they kill one, you can call out like an Alron or a Hidden Leaf Elf to call something else out, or even another Lucerium. It's just really good. This card is swiftly becoming one of my favorite low drop cards in a green package. And then to complement the Lucerium, we are playing three copies of Hidden Leaf Elf. Hidden Leaf Elf is... God, the combos you can do with this card are insane. So it has Swift, so you can Swift it out mid-combat, and then when it's summoned, you can summon any Leaf Kindred or Preybird Spirit, regardless of its cost, from your hand. You still have to pay for this, for the, the Leaf Kindred or the Preybird that you're summoning, but you're not summoning that card with Swift, so you can pay with cores from wherever, whereas you have to pay with cores from your reserve with Hidden Leaf Elf. Once she comes out, you can pay with cores from whatever in order to bring her out. One of my favorite plays with Hidden Leaf Elf is on defense, having like maybe a Feng Wong or even another Divine Toki on field. My opponent is coming at me and trying to do like a sick combo play. You Swift out Hidden Leaf Elf and then ascend Divine Toki Wall, off of one of your seven cost or more Preybird Spirits and exhaust the rest of their field out, and then they've kind of lost their entire attack step. So it's just really good bringing out an Alt-Ron with her, uh, Toki with her, even a Feng Wong is really, really nice, really nutty. And on defense mostly, this card has shined for me. It's really good on offense as well, but mainly on defense is where I've found the mo most success with this card. And then finally, to round it out, we have four copies of Forest Guardian Al Ron. She's just good. She ramps and she exhausts your opponent's spirits when she attacks or blocks. She has a really good stat line for her core cost. And, you know, you can call her out for free with, out, with Lucerium. You can call her out with Hidden Leaf Elf. She's just really good and very annoying for the opponent to deal with. So that is the Leaf Kindred side of the deck. Now let's get into the Prey Bird side of the deck. And on the Prey Bird side, we start with three copies of Mother Meadow Bird. It has Flash Swift, so you can bring it out uh, in the middle of the attack step. And then during your main step, if you're using it for Ascend, then it costs seven. So it works with Divine Tokiwa. It even works with Ira if you're trying to, to call to Ascend an Ira off of this. It's just really good. It enables your big plays with your Divine Tokiwa to exhaust your opponent's board and try and swing in for ma major damage. And of course, even if you don't have that, it can swift itself in if you just need a blocker or you want to bring it in early, utilize your cores effectively at, before the start of your next turn. And it's got an okay stat line. You can swift it in and throw five cores on it if something big got destroyed and you have the cores for it, and it's a 6k. So, you know, it's, it's, it's decent enough, and that ascend ability is really good for what we're going for. Then afterwards, we have three copies of... Wind Aegis General Tokiwa. This is Toki 5. And Toki 5 is... It's Toki 5. It's really good. It recurs itself from the drop. If you have fewer cards in your opponent, at the end of their turn, you pay the Soul Core, get it back to your hand. So with this and Hurricane Highlands, you can ramp and ramp and ramp. Use it to block. Use it to attack with Abandon. Uh, it has Gale 2, so if they block it, you're going to exhaust two of the Spirits. Even if it dies, you don't care because it's going to come back if you have fewer cards in your hand than your opponent, and you're able to ramp a lot of cores and play a lot of the cards in your hand, so you will likely have fewer cards in your hand than your opponent. And it's a Prey Bird, so you can Ascend Divine Tokiwa off of it. You won't get its Ascend effect, but it's still just really good. Uh, I'm very happy with three copies of Wind Aegis General Tokiwa. And then we are playing four copies of Divine Bird Tokiwa. This card is absolutely nutty. Like I said, with the Hidden Leaf Elf, you're able to exhaust your opponent's entire board on defense. And then even on offense, if you're going for game, you exhaust their board out if they don't have a suppression or a dream bomb or some way to bounce Tokiwa or find a way to defend, you're getting a free two damage in. And since you are, like I said, since you are ramping a lot and you are utilizing a lot of the cards in your hand, its ability to hand reversal, ditch your entire hand, draw up to however many your opponent has, as long as you ditch a Prey Bird, well, that's perfect with Wind Aegis Tokiwa to be able to, you know, recur that Toki from trash and then pitch it off of Divine Tokiwa skill and draw a new hand of five, six, however many cards to continue your, your battery on your opponent and it's got a decent stat line, one, one core, three core, and four cores. Only four cores for level three is really good. And 
I really, I'm, I'm really happy with this card. I really like it. And our secondary win condition, of course, like I've been saying, is three copies of Heavenly Emperor Feng Wong. Feng Wong closes out games. It, it's, it technically deals two damage when it's at level three. And it will, you know, will bounce your opponent's spirits when you deal damage to them and refresh itself. So an early, if you don't see Divine Bird Hokiwa, you have, have Heavenly Emperor Feng Wong. And in some instances, a well-timed Feng Wong can just end the game. Like if you were able to get it out early, say you, you know, slam down a couple Hurricane Highlands and you're able to get down a, a Feng Wong early then get it up to level three and your opponent has no way to ca to answer it you just close the game out on top of that it's an ascend target for a divine bird tokiwa and it's just another way to apply pressure to your opponent and it's it's really strong it's it's incredibly strong and it, i think it's a perfect complement to our ascend tokiwa and that is the spirits of the deck so we are going to be getting into magics now For our magics, we are running four copies of Starblessed Draw because we want to be able to see our pieces, and Starblessed Draw is just the best way to be able to see our pieces. You know, on burst, you can draw four. In main, you can draw two. It's just really good. You know, most every deck runs four copies of Starblessed Draw, and we are no different. And then to complement that, we are running four copies of Strong Draw. Now you may be asking, Jacob, if you are ditching your hand and drawing up to what your opponent has, why do you want so many draw spells? Well, the reason why we want so many draw spells is we are not always trying to use Divine Tokiwa's pitch ability, because sometimes you have really important cards in your hand that you don't want to get rid of. So you know, so we have this to complement that. On top of that, strong draw is a good way to battle trick and get something up in BP because it does have that 3k BP increase. So it could be useful outside of its draw three, ditch two ability. And plus, like I said, you strong draw, you draw three, you ditch two, one of them being like a Toki five, and you're able to recur that later. It's just we need to make sure that we see our pieces because it is kind of a combo-oriented deck. So this is why we run this core of being able to draw cards. Then, of course, we are running four copies of Absolute Ice Shield because Absolute Ice Shield. There's nothing else to say about that. Then we are running three copies of Beam Rifle. I've actually considered dropping it to two. I was running four, but I dropped it for another, dropped the fourth one for another spell. Just with all the ways that the deck has to exhaust your opponent, I'm wondering if this needs to be at three. Alternatively, you could run Needle Shot instead, because Needle Shot can direct target a spirit like a Hydra, so it can't attack again. And this, you know, your opponent is able to choose the, the, the spirits. So if they have three spirits on board, they're not going to, you know, exhaust the Hydra. So you could play Needle Shot instead or in conjunction maybe drop a strong draw and a star blast if you want to if you feel like you don't need that much draw and you can run needle shot as well but beam rifle is i mean it's it's such a strong card it's very powerful so we still run it and i have it as at three copies and then i drop the fourth copy of beam rifle for a single suppression in the main board and that's because sometimes you know, you really need to be able to defend, and if you've got a Feng Wong on board and they're not able to get rid of it, well, you suppression that Feng Wong and it's now an 18k, and it blocks over basically everything but a Sigurum Ira with five cords on it. So the suppression, having the, the single suppression can be very useful. You could argue that you want to play more suppression, but I think one is fine. It doesn't come up a lot because you're exhausting your opponent's board out all the time anyway. But if you really need it, then you have it. Plus that 3k power, even without using the 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 ability to block when it's exhausted, that 3k power can come up in a few instances. And then on top of that, we are running two copies of Dream Bomb because we need to bounce things. We need to bounce very scary things. And we've got two. Like I said, you could cut a... A, a beam rifle and add a third copy of dream bomb or maybe an inescapable avalanche or something like that but i think two copies of dream bomb is fine of course you can go above if you want to and that's the magics for the deck and before we get into the sideboard 
like I said, it's a very combo-centric deck. If you want to run more Praybirds, you could run Ostrara, but I'm not exactly sure what you would want to cut for Ostrara. You could run fewer Leaf Kindred, like no Lucerium, but I really, really like Lucerium. It, just the combat tricks you can do with Lucerium are really good. But I, I really don't think the deck needs something like Asrara. We have enough Prey Birds to be able to get off of Divine Tokiwa and everything like that. So I, I like the deck as it is. So let's go ahead and get into the sideboard. To start, we run two copies of Seabed Lighthouse. Because sometimes we want our opponent to not be able to use their Dream Bomb if they're not in white in battle. So we have the two copies of Seabed Lighthouse. Also, that level 2 ability, giving your level 3 spirits an extra 2k BP, is pretty useful. And then if we have Seabed Lighthouse out, so we have a Seabed lighthouse a sacred totem poles and some hurricane highlands well if they kill one and they can't kill the other you have a lot of high value targets that they have to choose from if they kill the seabed lighthouse you can still ramp off of your hurricane highlands and you can still burn them for damage off of your sacred totem poles so it's just a really good way to tell your opponent no matter what you do i still have a pretty strong play and then we run two copies of Counter Sword because Counter Sword's still really good. Like I said in previous videos, Counter Sword is a, going to be a staple, at least in the sideboard for this meta, for the set four meta, I do believe. And we have two copies. We're not running four copies of Counter Sword because we are running two copies of Valkyrie Hilder. And this is another reason why I really, really like. Uh, Bark Maiden Lucerium in the deck because we can side in the Valkyrie Hilder and then have our Lucerium get destroyed by, say, a Hydra or an Ira on summon, and we can call Valkyrie Hilder for free and bounce that Hydra or that Ira and just completely tell our opponent no. So, two copies of Valkyrie Hilder for that reason, alongside two copies of Counter Sword and two copies of Dream Bomb, is a good number of ways to tell our opponent no for the turn as well as, you know, the Divine Tokiwa trick on defense. <clears throat> After that, we have a second suppression, just in case we feel we need it. We are running a single copy of Core Theft, because sometimes we have a lot of cards in our hand. Say our opponent is running a bunch of, you know, has a bunch of cards, they just drew a bunch of cards off of Ira, and then we're able to draw a bunch of cards off of our Divine Tokiwa because they Ira'd us, then we, we can ditch those cards with the Core Theft, theft to level, say we level the Ira down and we block with Divine Tokiwa or Feng Wang, or we just outright kill a spirit, then a core theft can be very useful for that. I don't think more than one is very much needed. And then finally, we are running two copies of Rage Star Dragon Seekworm Ira in the side, because if we're ramping this much, why not run Ira? Because we can ascend Ira off of Mother Meadowbird, we can ascend Ira off of um, Divine Tokiwa and Fang Wong if we want to be able to clear the board. And even if we don't want to clear the board and we just want that extra two symbol spirit and that level three effect to be handy, we can ascend it off of like a Toki 5 or even a Hidden Leaf Elf because he all it requires is a Sin 4. And now we have this Rage Star Dragon Secret Ira on the field next to our Divine Tokiwa and we are swinging with two spirits that have two symbols that are plus 10k. So that's why I'm running the two copies of the Rage Star Dragon Seek Room Ira. I really like this as a tech in the deck, especially when your opponent doesn't know that you've got it, you side it in and you go, oh, hey, by the way, here's an Ira. They try to go really wide and you just drop an Ira on them and draw a bunch of cards. It's a lot of fun to do. So that's the deck and sideboard. Other considerations, like I said, could be Needle Shot. You could maybe run the Seabed Lighthouse in main if you want to, but I would recommend it. Probably a, a, it's a better sideboard option. Force of the Sacred Conifer is pretty good if you want to get your Swift units out early, but you would probably have to run more Swift units if you were, you know, running that as a main board card. Of course, you could run the Amethyst Sanctuary to to work both in conjunction with your Lucerium and your Alron if you're not running the Gale package. You could probably I you could run Jaeger to to go more Gale heavy, but Jaeger isn't a Leaf Kindred or a Prey Bird. So he kind of just does his own thing in the deck and he doesn't really like have any sort of synergy with the rest of the deck. Um of course you could maybe side in some copies of Burning Force or Feraral Slash if you're trying to get rid of your opponent's Nexus. 
Some people run Toki 7 as an Ascend target for Divine Tokiwa. I'm not a big fan of that because not it doesn't ramp you and it's, it's, its effect itself isn't the greatest. You know, it's mainly just a 7 cost Ascend fodder and at that point you have Mother Meadowbird already and you have uh, Fang Wong already. And if you're trying to, to do to Divine Tokiwa with like Hidden Leaf Elf shenanigans, well, you already have Fang Wong and everything like that. So those are my suggestions. Or Inescapable Avalanche as well is a pretty good card, especially if your opponent is trying to use Armor White or anything like that because it doesn't target. But yeah, that is the Divine Tokiwa Gale list for set four that I have been messing with. This is probably the deck that I am the most comfortable with and the happiest about so far in set four. It's given me the best results in most scenarios and the better the more i get better with it the better my matchup versus hydra has been which is really good and the matchup versus ira is also pretty decent as long as you're able to see your combo pieces but it can be a pretty i guess skill expressive deck because there are good moment there are right moments and wrong moments when you want to make your plays sometimes you want to hold plays back and stuff like that it's just the kind of deck that the more you practice with it the better you get with it so but it's a lot of fun to play and i hope you guys enjoyed the deck list and the breakdown of it and the strategies involved with it if you did make sure to like and subscribe we just recently hit 400 subscribers so thank you all so much if you're new here hit that subscribe button, help us get to 500. We will be having more gameplay videos coming soon, more deck profiles coming soon, so definitely stay tuned. Hit that bell to make sure you are notified of every upload. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.